Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III, AC3, and welcome to the Archie Luxury Program. And today, fuckers, I want to ask a question. Supposing you are a man, supposing you're a man, and you're sick of playing with toys, sick of playing with toys, and you want a very serious wristwatch. You want a serious wristwatch, something that can be a really cool companion, companion for your quest for pussy, a uh, companion for your quest for promotions, a true companion you can wear, love, and uh, enjoy life, get things done. What do you choose, fuckers? What do you choose? And uh, this is a very interesting question. So many people have asked me, what's the answer, Archie? What is that mythical answer? And uh, I've, I've often said the two great watches of our times at this point are the Omega Speedmaster, Man on the Fucking Moon, and the Rolex Explorer 2. And I've often said that these two fuckers are two critters which can get life done. So today I want to do the best first luxury wristwatch. The best first luxury wristwatch for a man. Now let's take a look at the two contenders. Contender 1. Contender 1 is the Rolex Explorer 2. Now, fuckers, I ideally would be saying you'd be buying this from a dealer. This is great value on the secondary market. It's priced around the same price as a GMT new. If you were to buy a new Rolex, I'd really be going GMT or sub. The, the Explorer 2 does not retain as much value. But on the secondary market, these are fantastic buying. And uh, you can pick these up for very good prices. I paid for this Explorer 2 here. I paid four and a half thousand Australian dollars after GST back. And I, I bought this from a dealer in Melbourne. That's right, fuckers. No special treatment here. And this is a 2004, no holes case, super loom dial, beautiful stunner of a sports Rolex. And it's just an absolute stunner. The design of it, well, it's very much based on the GMT, but it has that metal fixed bezel. Came out in 1972 originally. This is the 80s update when it became the 16. The original 1972 was a 1655. Then the Sapphire version, the transition model, the 16550. And it's a very, very up-to-date case. Very modern. It's uh, It's had little tweaks over the years. This is sort of one of the the last of them. It's got the flip lock bracelet it's got the solid end links the no holes case this is kind of the the sweet spot the sweet spot fuckers and uh, i i think very good buying on the used on the used market very very cool very good buying on the used market the other contender the other contender the Omega Speedmaster Man on the Fucking Moon. Now this here, this came out in the late 50s. So the actual, the style of the case is very, very 1950s indeed. It's, uh, it's had minimal tweaks. It's still got the Helsa Light glass crystal fitted. The Helsa Light, the plastic glass. And uh, I would would highly recommend the original, the original, the original non-display back version. The, this is the the one that is is the the standard sort of model. It's uh, the bracelet has improved with age. Yes, yes, it's gone from a rattlesnake. It's now got the uh, the spring 
spring clasp there it has improved a lot it's uh it's 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 a gorgeous piece and uh it has a few flaws like every watch does have flaws it's no longer using the column wheel chronograph yes yes that that was something that uh the 321 movement version had there so it's a cams chronograph that's true but it's a chronograph it's manual wine it's got the plastic glass so it, it's more for the watch enthusiast whereas the explorer 2 could suit any man the explorer 2 has got a date function and it's automatic as well as that second time zone the omega speedmaster some people say it's a pain in the ass to wind the fucker up i disagree i think it's a it's a great thing so which what's the price of the uh the speedmaster well i paid 37 aussie from a dealer three thousand seven hundred dollars um so after tax back i think i paid thirty four hundred dollars for this fuckers not bad buying at all